Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. You guys remember last time we worked on this thing, we actually got it to start and run, but we were using a portable CDI box. Electrically, it appears to have a problem. I have the jump box hooked up to the battery here, and you turn the switch on, and you got no lights, and you turn the headlight on, I showed you that yesterday, and you got nothing, and you push the button, right? You got nothing going on here, right? No headlight, nothing. Electrically, this thing is stone cold dead. We know that power goes from the battery and it follows the wire harness up. And the first place it goes is the switch, the on and off switch. And when you turn the switch on, you send power to here and from here, right? You do the starter, you do the lights, you do everything you need to do. So, I thought, okay, let's follow the wires. So this is the positive terminal, and you follow it around, and one of the lugs, or the main lug, goes to one side of the starter solenoid. And a wire comes off of that, and it goes to these two fuses, and these two fuses are supposed to go up the wire harness. The only problem is we have an opening here. I noticed that the other day and what I did is I took a quick look um, at some schematics of the wire harness and it looks like there's a piece of the wire harness missing between here and in there. So I said all right that's cool, I guess. But where is this going? This has to go up to the switch. And if I bypass that, what will happen? Does the whole electrical system come back to life or do I have more trouble? So we have the switch here. And power has to go from here to the switch. And how hard is that? Well, if you just kind of tilt this up, just a little bit you have wires that go to the switch right you can see the switch is right there right and if you follow the wires coming out of the switch here they are and you have two wires now I want to put power into this such that the switch is still part of the deal and the way you know you did that is first of all the red traditionally is hot not always, but traditionally. But you can also kind of tell this comes from the battery because see how it's covered? And they do that just in case, right, you know, um, the wires come apart and this touches around, right? You don't want it to touch the ground and, and damage anything. So if I put power right here, let's see what happens. So I hook that red wire up to right where it comes out of the fuses. Once again, it's hot, so we don't want to be touching it against any metal and I put it right into the input of the switch so when I turn the switch on check it out we got us some neutral light let's see if we could go further than that we have some electric starter so we know power is going through the switch and coming here but right we have no headlight um, given that these lights came on I'm feeling pretty good about everything and I'm gonna check the headlight out separately when you do check out the headlight do yourself a favor though you really want to unplug the wires because though I would use the jump pack there is still a battery there and if the headlights turned on and you happen you don't know which wire is which as you're messing around down here right you can put your jump pack positive into negative and negative into positive and that battery in your jump pack will now have a problem You'll probably blow the fuses, but still, 
that now adds another problem onto what you're troubleshooting. I have power and I wonder if I have spark now. So I plugged these wires back in again. Remember I unplugged them to use the portable CDI box. And what we have going on is something interesting here. If you look closely, oops, got to turn it on, not off. If you look closely, you see it might have sparked once and then it stopped sparking. And by the way, that's infuriating because if you go to start it, it'll like pop once and then it won't do anything. And you'll check and you'll see one spark and you'll go, I have spark. And then you'll do it again. And once again, it'll fire once and then stop. And meanwhile, you're going crazy. My experience with that, it could be a million things, but my experience with that is normally there is something going on with the on and off switch here. This thing, I said it yesterday, has a complicated ignition system. You got one of these CDI units go forward and the other one is for backwards and interlocks and stuff like that. So it's a bit complicated as you're troubleshooting this. You got to make sure that your neutral light is on, but are your CDI boxes seeing that you're in neutral? We know the switch is on, but once again, are your CDI boxes seeing that the switch is on? That makes makes this ignition system very complicated to troubleshoot, especially to troubleshoot on video. The way I deal with this, and you guys could go, oh, you shouldn't do that or whatever, but the way I deal with this is I tend to just get all that out of there, put a 12-volt CDI system on it, have it so that when I turn on the power, the power goes to the CDI block and I don't push the start button unless I see the green neutral light on. That's bypassing an interlock and that might not be the safest thing for you guys to do. Whatever I do with this, I'm going to do in another video. I'm going to give the OEM wiring a little bit of a sniff to see if it's fixable. But this thing is now, what, a 22-year-old all-terrain vehicle, 22-year-old wire harness. And I know the engine's been on and off of this thing, so I'm not quite sure what its issue is. I mean, does the CDI box think it's in reverse? Um, nah, it doesn't care about reverse. The CDI boxes only care about neutral or whether they're turned off for this particular bike. So... I'm going to spend a few minutes, and um, depending on what it looks like and all that, I'm going to do that in a different video. One thing I do want to talk about, one of my subscribers asked, and this is a really good time to talk about this. Let's talk about the starting solenoid. One of my, um, one of my subscribers said that they... Um, they swapped out their solenoid, they swapped out everything, and they cannot get their starting solenoid to engage. Now what I want you to do is notice, and hopefully the sunlight won't interfere with this, notice there are two, am I showing you my thumb? I can't even see it in the screen, right there. That there are two wires going to this, the yellow and the green wire. To make your starting solenoid engage, typically the green wire should be at ground and the yellow wire needs to go hot when you push this button. Now why won't that happen? In my case I have things turned off so it won't happen. 
The other reason why it won't happen is if your neutral switch is no good, right, your starting solenoid will not get ground. So even though you're putting power to it, right, given that you have no ground, you have no circuit, which means you have, even though you're putting voltage to it, you're not putting power to it because you don't have ground, right, that you shunt the voltage into, which creates a current, which gives you power. So you need both on this starting solenoid and the one you're probably talking about with the Chinese all-terrain vehicle you need one ground you need ground on one side of the coil notice I'm using the coil not the big lugs the the small wire that's the smaller wires that go to the coil one side needs to be grounded and the other side power now I made a comment about the green wire I've seen on some of the China stuff where your green wire might not necessarily be um, the one that ground comes in. Or sometimes they have yellow and green, which to them means ground. To me, when I see the yellow, I think hot. And then they have green and red, right? You know. So be careful about where they're putting which wire. But if I had a guess for the person who asked that question, if I had to guess, either the wire going to your engine is not working or in your engine your neutral switch is not working. Back to it, if you bypass that, if you permanently put one side of that coil to ground, it won't matter if your neutral light works or not. As soon as you turn on power and hit the button, right, one side's already hooked to ground. So it's going to go around. And if you're talking a child's all-terrain vehicle, once again, it could start up when you're in first gear. So just a comment, perhaps the starting solenoid you picked up um, has two wires coming out of it. Um, some of them also, um, the starting solenoid needs to be bolted to a metal frame because it picks up ground through the mount. Um, just make, make, sure, make sure your starting solenoid coil is engaging, and you could do that by, once again, grounding one side of it and, you know, tickling the other side. Right, you could pull these wires right off here, and you could tickle the other side with the battery. You want to take both wires off. Once again, make sure one goes to ground and the other one goes to the battery. And your starting solenoid should engage, and round and round it should go. I'm going to stop this here because we made some progress <laughs> and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do the ignition on this thing. I'm not sure if I'm going to cheat or not. So probably what I'm going to do is once again, I'm going to, I'm going to take a quick look at the schematics, which is why I kind of have to stop here. And then I got to look to see what pins on these, um, on these two CDIs, I can back check and figure out what's going on. On a completely different topic, I was thinking of taking one video a week and answering questions. I don't know how you guys feel about that. And, and the, the reason being is like the one on this starter, I happen to be in the right place to tell you guys this kind of stuff. But, um, that's not always the case, right? If I'm in the middle of swapping out an engine or, you know, picking up a deal or dealing with the flea market stuff or, you know, building a carburetor mount, it's not very helpful if I, I don't have in front of me what's necessary. So to, to tell you guys what I need to tell you. So I was thinking of dedicating one, one day a week, one video a week just to uh, answering comments I don't know how you guys feel about that. So, that yeah, was something I was going to try. Let me know what you guys think. And in the meantime, I want you all to keep your feet down. I want you to keep your heads up. And I want you to get out there and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.